Discharge is an important variable that governs many aspects of stream function, such as habitat diversity and rates of nutrient export. It is also a measure of water availability to meet in-stream and extractive water uses. The most common approach to measuring discharge is the velocity area method, which involves measuring the depth and velocity at points across the stream using a flow meter. It can sometimes be difficult to use the velocity area method in small and steep streams. Salt dilution is an alternative method of stream gauging. This involves injecting salt and determining its dilution following complete mixing into the flow. Salt dilution gauging allows the discharge to be measured without wading across the river, which can sometimes be hazardous in many fast flowing and turbulent rivers. Common table salt, sodium chloride, is popular for dilution gauging for three main reasons. Firstly, table salt is cheap, portable and readily available. Secondly, it can be accurately measured using an electrical conductivity meter. And thirdly, it is non-toxic or damaging to the environment. Four main pieces of equipment are needed to carry out salt dilution gauging. Firstly, you will need sodium chloride in the form of table salt. Secondly, you will need a bucket and something to stir the water. And finally, an electrical conductivity meter, which you should be able to source from your geography or environmental department. The first step is to measure the electrical conductivity downstream. Secondly, you should collect a bucket of water from the river. You then need to dissolve a known quantity of salt into the bucket of river water that has been collected. Here you can see Rachel adding half a kilogram of salt into the bucket of water. In order to ensure that the salt dissolves fully, you should stir the solution thoroughly. You then need to throw the bucket of river water with the known quantity of dissolved salt into the channel. It is recommended that you inject the solution upstream at a length of approximately 20 times the width of the river. From when the salt is thrown in, take records of the conductivity meter every 5 seconds until the conductivity stabilises and record these results. And finally, an electrical conductivity meter, 
which you should be able to source from your geography or environmental departments. And finally, an electrical conductivity meter, which you should be able to source from your geography or environmental departments. And finally, an electrical conductivity meter, which you should be able to source from your geography department. And finally, an electrical conductivity meter, which you should be able to source from your geography or environmental department. <coughs> the first step is to measure the electrical conductivity downstream. Secondly, you should collect a bucket of water from the river. You then need to dissolve a known quantity of salt into the bucket of river water. You then need to dissolve a known quantity of salt into the bucket of river water that has been collected. You then need to dissolve a known quantity of salt into the bucket of river water. Here you can see Rachel adding half a kilogram of salt into the bucket of water. In order to ensure the salt dissolves fully, you should stir the solution thoroughly. In order to ensure that the salt dissolves fully, you should stir the solution thoroughly. <coughs> 